Okay, everyone, back to business. Finland versus Spain, our first game of the day. Braxis holdout is our starting map. We are currently looking at the group stage in Finland so far against Spain. It's going to be a pretty important match for the, uh, both of them here. So let's check out who's going to take the first one. I mean, at this point, Finland obviously already playing a couple of pretty sweet games with an Asmodan variation that they tried on uh, um, to the Spider Queen, but they haven't really been too successful when it comes to just sheer results. So at this point, they're going to attempt to get a big victory over Span, Spain, <laughs> Span, over the Spanish team. Uh, Spain already, of course, losing to Italy, just one example, since uh, that match was also pretty strong there. So this could actually be an evenly matched game, just like to stop rambling here for a moment. So we have my F-band out again, and we also have Garrosh eliminated. But especially Finland has shown a bit of a tendency to go into strategies or hero picks that you might not necessarily always expect. That Asmodan combo with Johanna is just one example. So we could see something similar here. I was actually kind of disappointed that it didn't work out, because I feel they had a lot of potential there. But in case you haven't watched the game yet, there was a situation where we've seen uh, Finland with, I think, 150 gems on Tomb. And they were trying to turn in and finally could have made come back into the game by turning in those gems and nearly finished stacking Asmodan. And then they got completely wiped, lost all 150 gems. And that, of course, of course was more or less the early end of the game. It was a bit unfortunate, but I still like the idea behind it. I mean, again, this is not the top tier teams that are in this tournament. So they're willing to experiment a little bit more. And when we talk about uh, teams experimenting, we've seen, for example, the UK play a lot with Probius and other heroes and with great success at that as well. So it was actually pretty sweet. For now, on the other hand, we're having Genji banned out and also after the uh, after Garrosh Diablo taken apart, but Tyrande is still a first pick. Has been played a lot lately with Anubarak in particular, if Diablo and Garrosh are taken away. But you can of course still make it happen with other heroes, if you for example want to play with Stitchers. The German team has showed that pretty um, uh, well too. Malfurion and Reyna, first picks on Braxis. And that leaves us still with a new Brock open, Stitches open as well, so the synergy with Tyrande as the follow-up stun is definitely there. A new Brock can also rotate a little bit quicker with a Burrow Charger, like he has the mobility that he can oftentimes use just between the lanes, so that helps a bit too. Of course the off lanes are going to be pretty important here, so it's going to be interesting what's going to be taken there. It's going to be Blaze for example, there's the Johanna. Over an Uberak choice and Jaina. So a lot of wave clear already in the former and that we have for Spain. Pretty decent setup for them. Offlaners are going to be highly important and Dehaka of course can go for the Borough again. We've seen Leoric, Thrall all at the top lane blaze. Urel of course still another hero that has a huge impact there if played correctly. And the mobility on top of that too. But let's come to the bands and see what exactly we're having them take away. Offlaner, yep, Dehaka taken away. They have the next two picks, so they can easily go into their own offlaner. Could be Blaze, for example. They still have the option to also play a Nubarak here with Malfurion. That's another variation that we've seen a lot. A Nubarak Malf, a Nubarak Taranda has been played quite a bit. And if you want to go for kills on the bot lane, you can definitely do it. But it's going to be tricky against Johanna. With Iron Skin uh, being up, it's going to be a little bit more tricky to make any of this happen. And Stitches being banned out is a good move here from Finland because that could be a problem. Stitches hook into Malfurion root and burst damage behind it and you might get the target. If you only hook Johanna, it is not going to be the biggest of deals, or at least it shouldn't be, but if you get close enough to Jane or Taranda, they're just dead right away. So that's a really, really decent ban for them right now. But what's the picks? Muradin and Chromie. Alright, Chromie is going to fire away at the bot lane. Muradin can also set her up with a few stuns. That can definitely be really annoying setup if you have Malfurion full up with the root, so I'm ready for this. Let's see what Chromie is going to do with that particular setup now. This could be decent damage if they can snipe Tyrande or Jaina with that, if Chromie is able to get the shots in. Could be well that plays. That she played most of the mages for the team so far. Ooh, Ragnar Ross and Zeratu. Lava wave incoming. To be fair, you could play that with Void Prison into Sulfura Smash. Now the Zeratul pick is a little bit... I don't want to say it's weird. But I didn't quite expect that to be taken for the offlane for the final pick. Uh, definitely going to be annoying for Malfurion and Chromie to deal with. But Ragnaros, very... Oh, 
Rexa, alright, we going in. Rexa to the top lane, together with Misha. And we have Ragnaros, very likely with a lava wave here, considering the objective. But if they really feel the need to go into a bit of snipe, they might do that too. And yeah, let's head into the game. Game number one, Braxis Holdout. And we are heading into our game with the wrong overlay. Which we have to adjust later. Okay, that's gonna be a little bit weird. But anyways, we have Finland on the left side, Buvel on Chromie, the Duke on Rexa, up to the top lane, obviously. Chica Bow Wow on Muradin, me on Malfurion, and we have MXC on Reyna to the right side, Riodum on Toranda for Spain, Viva España with Inato on Jaina, Exilom on Zaratul, Darkhead on Ragnaros, Lava Wave incoming. And Kuroneko on Johanna. Alright, let's see how this is going to work out for the two here. Is Finland going to walk away with a victory? Is Raksa and Misha going to be successful? Or who is going to take it? So my apologies for the overlay for the little gap that we have at the top. Um, uh, I kind of wanted to go back to the HSC overlay since the poll basically won out for in favor of using the HSC overlay in the future. But I kind of forgot to adjust that, I think. So we're going to do that for game number two. But for this game, we're going to have to live with that slight gap up there, top side. With that being said, already stacking process starting up here with Sandblast. Base quest, of course, starting to do its thing. And down to the bottom of the map. The Storm Bolts are coming in now too. Good stun from Taranda against Prevel. But no consequences just yet. Nobody following it up with the damage. There's no additional damage from Jaina or anybody else. Level 1 talent, by the way. The Bird of Prey taken for a bit more minion clear by Rexa. Still can go into the Animal Husbandry later on and go for basically infinite stacking. And talking about the lane setup, you actually have now to the top lane always Zeratul starting to poke in a little bit. And he's going to be doing a lot of that. Just trying to rotate between the two lanes and be a bit tricky there. Trying to take out maybe Rexa if they can get a hit in or maybe sneak in here and attack Chromie and already trying to go for her but there's such a thing as time traps. The stuns on the other hand are pretty solid and also the singularity of Spike is hitting hard but it's not enough damage to seriously threaten her and Chromie is just firing away. Goes by the way with the timely surprise now also into a time trap build. So I was trying to set those up. That's going to make this really interesting because now all of a sudden you're going to have a ton later on if you're hitting 20 as well where that you can push out. We have actually seen a couple of Chromies going into a breath build lately, but not really all that successful. But yeah, for now, she's still getting the stacks together, and I mean, I not collected already, so that's not too bad. Up to the top, Rex, of course, is going to have a very good time against... Oh, Jaina! Oh, <laughs> that's a close call. Inertia barely walking away from this one. Yeah, Rexa is going to have a fantastic time as long as he's only going up against Ragnaros alone. As, as long as Zeratul stays there and sneaks in every now and then, it's a different story. But it's really going to be tricky for Ragnaros to hold that one against Misha and against Rexa. Because that's basically a two for one for a long time. So it's really, really tricky. And that being said, we have now also the Hunter-Gatherer taken for Rexa. So it's still going to work around that globe. Would probably love for Zeratul to finally leave the lane so that he has also secured access to the neutral globe towards the top to stack that even quicker but with Zaratul hanging around he really can't control that lane that easily but he blocks against Jojo good job by Chikabawa but no one there to help him out with a kill and now Zaratul is moving in too no kill for Finland and instead they are losing murder and Zaratul goes in hits the quick cleave and that's the kill right there job well done by Spain Finland going a little bit too deep Nobody really following up on Muradin he jumped in and provided a few more body blocks, so that was quite unfortunate for them. To the top lane, Peter has already called because Misha is down, Rexa didn't take proper care of her. Lock him up, lock him up. And down to the bottom of the map, we are still seeing Buvel firing away and going into that time trap build that we've been talking about earlier, having the Chrono Sickness now too. So cooldown reduction, mana cost reduction. 
And it's actually really nice if you just want to control the space. It's a fan it can be a fantastic talent. It's very, very annoying to go up against that build. It's not quite as powerful in terms of damage output, but you can follow up with other heroes, obviously, onto the time traps and really control that. And we see it already here. Johanna walks straight into the time trap and immediately the follow up from the remaining heroes trying to get the damage in. Now that we're having the top side, Ragnaros, by the way, alone because Zeratul rotated bot lane, immediately Braxa has taken control of the lane. Oh, nice kill against Jaina. Good jump against by Muradin going straight in here. And then Chromie and Reyna both following up. But as you can see here, now we're having that weird situation for Ragnaros where he basically has to make a decision. Does he push the wave out? Does he go for the objective? And the objective is taken by Finland. 100% Zerg wave against zero. Still get, of course, that 19,000 there. But level 7, talent now on both sides. And we're having on uh, 7, aspect of the beast taken. And besides that, that push down here is going to be easily defended. But obviously, Ragnaros has Molten Core. Don't even need Nava Wave to already push that out. Molten Core alone is already be a great talent. And I'm still personally a little bit curious to see what they're going to do with Ragnaros on level 10. Because I'm actually not really objecting too much to playing Lava Wave on Braxis Holdout. But then again, at the same time, you can also still play Sulfuras, set up the Void Prison and hit the Sulfuras on top of it and basically secure yourself a kill if you play your cards right. So that's something that they could definitely do. The Spanish team might be trying to pull that off. But we're going to find out once that they're actually arriving there. They're trying to get a kill against Johanna. But that doesn't quite work out. The lockdown against Jaina is nearly dropping her though. And so far, Finland is dominating this pretty heavily. But as you can see, this entire push has basically done nothing. I, I talked about this the other day when we were in the game between uh, when Germany was playing. I really think that the objective on this map is right now pretty weird. It just feels very difficult to get in a normal game and it's easy for your opponent to interrupt the progress. And then once you get the objective, it feels like it doesn't really do a whole lot, especially compared to what your opponent gets, even if they don't get a single percent on the progress bar. So it's a really, really weird map these days. And there comes the damage, but Chromie is dead. Taken down by Johanna with the final blow, was trying to go into a temporal loop play. But that didn't quite work out. If you're already on the retreat, it's usually not where you want to use that. So in this case, we're now having the first kill, or the second kill even, for Spain. Two kills against one. Spain currently looking strong with it. And the stacks continue to come in on the side of Tyrande as well as she lands one Lunar Flare after another. Seven already concluded. We're having Chromion, 45 stacks for the Sandblast main quest. And on top of that, of course, also now the Stormbolt quest continuing with 12 stacks for Muradin. So he's doing fairly well and will eventually get the Pierce here in a timely fashion for himself. Top lane again, the pressure from the Duke. Rexa is one of those heroes that on this map is actually great. The problem is always if you are... In against a team that has mobility on their heroes and they can jump on Raxa in that backline. That's tricky. But in a solo lane, like on Raxus, Raxa is actually kind of viable. You can do really, really well there because it's tricky for an opponent to hold the shrine or to hold the beacon and control the lane at the same time. So uh, oftentimes you will just see a setup where you have someone sending Misha simply down here trying to hold that in and out. Rexa pushes out the wave and then your opponent is like in a spot where he has to choose what exactly you're gonna do there. Kill at the bot lane. Malfurion is down. Ring of Frost and here comes the lava wave. And you kinda need to dodge that. Oh ho ho! Buvel nearly falls to the lava wave here. Spain definitely fighting back. And again on Braxit I actually do not mind lava wave too much. But with the Void Prison they could have gone into Sulfuros 2, but obviously you already have the Ring of Frost to set that up. I have no idea what exactly Ragnaros was doing. I really got the feeling that if he was trying to walk away, he could have. So he stays a bit too long there and falls. So a good rotation from Jimmy that ends up with a kill for them. Two kills against three. Attempt to drop Zara tool. Not quite working out just yet, but we have a lot of action going here with heroic abilities on both sides now. And already the timeout for Chromie, not heading into Bye Bye on level 13. We've actually seen that way more than I'm uh, willing to admit recently, and, and Tim would be proud. But outside of that, instead now it's the quick timeout here. Still keeps you in uh, this inside, and there's a fair in amount of interrupts against Bye Bye, of course, as well. So one of the reasons why you want to be a bit careful taking that talent 
it can be kind of nice, but not if you are against a massive amount of interrupts. Then uh, you definitely have to rethink how you approach this. Base quest completed for Chromie as we're heading in. The kill against Jimmy, though. Like the execution that we are seeing from Spain now, they are a lot more decisive in the way that they are jumping on an isolated target. And they get a kill against Reyna pretty easily. Chikabawao still trying to get a couple of Storm Bolts in and working on the point, but eventually is going to have to move back from this one. Doesn't have the healing static yet. Jumps out straight into the Void Prison. The ring is not hitting anything. And immediately Malfurion with his own ult and nearly a kill against Spain here. Yeah. Kuroneko has to be careful very much here yeah, against all that poke that is happening from Chromie right now. But yeah, it's a little bit of a weird setup. I mean, that ring was not on point. The Void Prison was actually quite solid, but the ring didn't connect with anybody here. Felt a little bit like Jaina didn't quite know who to go for. It's a little bit tough if you also want to take Muradin. That might have been the intended target, but since he was still mid-air, it's a little bit more difficult to hit that, of course. By now, a 2 for 1 again, and every single time that Spain rotates heroes to the top and doesn't get a kill, these 2 for 1 setups are actually an advantageous position for Finland. Go away, go away, move to the top, yep, and there we go. Massive value, oh no, wait, one wave value for a lava wave. Yeah. I mean, it's nice for lane control. I personally like it more so timed with mercenary camps or later on in the game when they can get a bit of value out of it when the objective is coming in again and you can use it to clear that out while you're still pushing. But again, on this map kind of works. Temporal loop and Kuroneko, body blocked again, already used the iron skin, maybe a little bit too early. Hyperion comes out too, but they're trying to turn around against Chikabawao. Wow. Stun comes through. Void Prison is still on cooldown. Can't use that yet. And to the top side, Ragnaros is struggling a bit. Slow down again, trying to move away from this one. All right, still stays, but you can really see the problem. With Misha and Rexa around, he is in a really, really tough spot here. Rexa is, again, pretty solid in these setups, but here comes the attack from the rotating Zeratu. Rotation top, and goodbye, Rexa. A little bit too aggressive, nobody calling out Zeratul's rotation, which is always really tricky anyways, because he's normally trying to lurk in the shadows and try and move in from the side, so it's difficult to uh, keep track of that. But yep, in this case they didn't, and now we have Reyna rotating over to make sure that they're not losing out on experience. Progress bar, 40 points against 10. And we're having, by the way, now also Chromie with, let me see, damage output on 29,000. Reyna's a little bit farther ahead. Bivel needs to be careful, gets stunned once, uses the timeout, but here comes Johanna, and she still has her blessed shield, doesn't even have to use it, they can easily just move in and take down Chromie. Chromie dead, six kills against two, but to the top lane, yeah, Ragnaros is not gonna make it here. Ragnaros down, and the quest completed for Muradin. So when it comes to uh, quest completion, they're actually starting to do fairly well here. But of course, overall, when you're looking at the uh, damage output and also when you're looking at the kills, the Spanish team is just starting to sneak very much ahead. Now we're also having, at the same time, Lava Wave ready again. Use it now and you get two waves out of it. They're pushing heavily on the bot lane now too, so this is actually going to be really annoying for Finland. They're losing the fort there, they lost already the fountain, Spain lost that too, but the map is starting to open up pretty significantly and that gives also Zeratul a little bit more wiggle room. Immediately attacked as he walks into the time trap. Very, very early Hyperion here, trying to make sure that they can defeat the double mercenary camp without the Spanish team interfering. And to the top lane as Ragnaros was killed earlier, we're now seeing also... Oh, that's the lava wave again. <laughs> Fair amount of damage. Doesn't really matter too much. This is again one of those waves that didn't really do anything. It would have been better to just like use it at the top. I mean, the idea with Lava Wave, you can use it in several ways, right? You can try and, for example, deep push a lane when there's catapults pushing in, when there's mercenary camps pushing in, when there's an objective pushing in, then you can use it. If you want to use it just to gain a little bit more lane controller, if you're just trying to clear out the lane, then try and use it with the timing so that you get the maximum amount of enemy minion waves. And the Lava Wave that was used at the bottom, as Johanna falls down here, as you use that at the bottom, they got one minion wave out of lava wa of the lava wave, which has a pretty significant cooldown. So they kind of want to time it a little bit differently. 
And always when the when the wave comes out, just so that you properly time it, that you calculate it a little bit through, and then you normally hit the next wave. I mean, it's always a 20 second window between the waves here. So with that being said, for the late game on Brexit, it's still a really, really good tool. Just deep pushing, like we've seen how much the objective can do, even if you want it in your opponent only as a couple of um, percentage points. So if you have Ragnaros, you can just set the lava wave onto the other lane while you push with your own wave. So that's a really cool tool to have. And this is one of the reasons why the ult on this map is a lot more beneficial than on others. As I said before, they could have gone into a Void Prison into Sephora Smash setup, but they already have Jaina for the Ring of Frost, and they just feel like that's going to be enough for that. 44% on the progress against 18. They're going for Misha, and Misha is down. So now Rexa is all alone in the world. 16 versus 16 on the talent bar, down to the bottom of the map now. We're having also the 16 talents means that we have stone form, that we have for Chromie the quantum overdrive, so even a bit more spell power for Chromie to get the damage through. And Pain and Rat, the 16 overpower talents, uh, sorry, um, penetrating round talent for Rainer. Super important if you want to have a bit more sustainability for yourself. Void Slash then again for Zeratul is now ready too, and that can be a massive problem. On the damage side, we're currently looking at 35 and 36,000 damage on Chromie and on Reyna. And on Ragnaros, it's 63,000 already. Doing solid work here against not only Misha. This is like one of the weird things. If you have Rexa on the other side, Misha usually is just an opponent's phase and takes damage all the time. So against Misha, you can really start stacking damage like we see on the hero damage side here from Ragnaros. It's also kind of interesting if that happens in any case when you have a quest talent that you, for example, want to stack. I mean, let's take an example that you won't see, but if you are, for example, having uh, Zagara with serrated spines on level 4 against Rexa, you will be able to just stack that talent into Oblivion against Misha. Never really going to happen in uh, any kind of pro play, but in a quick match you every now and then see that there's other talents where you can just simply try and stack it onto an opponent. And Misha is usually so much in the face of an opponent's team that it's kind of easy to get that done. And it counts as a hero hit as well. So that kind of matters there too. With that being said, five kills against six. Up to the top, again the rotation from Spain as they move topside with three heroes to first of all see if they can get access to the beacon, but also trying of course to get that kill itself. But now they are about to lose their own four at the bot lane, because there's no one here to defend against this. So as long as the Jix doesn't fall up here, they should be fine. Interestingly enough, there's no one trying to save that fort either, so it's just simply an exchange in forts, and that's really a bad trade for Finland, because theirs was still on full health, whereas the bottom one already had suffered a lot. I could have even seen Finland just staying at the bot lane and starting to push for the keep. For the, um, uh, for the keep. Darkhead is trying to take down the fort so that he can get his ult in. Should be interrupted, but nope. No one interrupts him. Here's the lava wave. Everybody sits in the lava wave. And Ragnaros is absolutely murdering people here. At least initially. The rest of the team is still a bit busy, but there comes Zeratul. Void slash, kill after kill. Romy and Malfurion down. The ring hits Reyna. They're going for another one. This is a disaster currently for Finland. They at least kill Ragnaros, but they still lose Reyna. And they're going to lose more than that. Fain death being used to dodge a singularity spike here. But Murden is now dead too. Yeah, that was pretty weird. I mean, this was literally Ragnaros sending them a letter saying like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take the fort down so I can use Molten Core and have a Lava Wave too. Could you please just stay aside just for a few seconds so that I get that through? And do me a favor, when I channel Molten Core, please don't stun me. And Finland, surprisingly as it may seem, was sitting there saying like, dude, totally cool. Just do your thing. You do you, dude. You do you. And yeah, well, Ragnaros did and completely <laughs> destroyed them. So, oh, that would be a nice help. Great ice block here from Inertial. I have the keep down, but that was a really nice ice block. And now, does she have Iron Skin still? No, but there was also no follow-up, really. Uh, I don't know, Finland is struggling a bit. We're having 10 versus 6 now in terms of kills. And Finland has at least taken down some structures on the bot side of the map, but they are really having trouble in those big team fights to coordinate in themselves. The last one, some people were dealing with Ragnaros, three to be exact, the rest was pushing out the, uh, the back of the of the team. And we had it even at the beginning when Shigabawa was moving in and trying to uh, get a kill against Johanna, body blocking her, and the rest of the team just didn't really believe that he would be able to get her there 
so they moved away. Talking about moving away, interestingly enough, with all the leads that they have, Spain just decided they don't want the objective. Spain literally was in a spot, I mean, you don't want to force a team fight or you don't want to give your opponent a team fight because they're close to level 20, but they just gave up the objective without ever rotating on any of these points and making any kind of play for it. It shouldn't matter, I mean, the lava wave is already coming through the bot lane and that's where it finds its most value. It's like zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
very, very reliably. Just uh, an extremely powerful hero that combos off so well with so many other heroes for stun setups. Then it calls the extra damage to the Hunter's Mark and even the scouting tool with the Owl, which is absolutely fantastic here. A new Burak already chosen on the first pick, so a little bit of an engage heavy composition planned by the Spanish team. Very likely that they would love to get Malfurion with that. So we could see Malfurion already picked by Finland now, just to get a good healer for themselves. And at the same time, deny a combo to the Spanish team that they would probably love to play here. A new Burak with either Toronto or Malfurion has been a staple. Stitches and Malfurion! There we go. Stitches right away, trying to pull a bit of a Loranas here with Malfurion. Phil would be proud. Can they land the roots though? That's the question. Is Malfurion gonna lay down the lawn or is he gonna get completely burned to ashes? Because then again, I could totally see another Ragnaros coming in here. There's the Stukov. So if you don't get access to Malfurion or to Tyrande, Stukov is your best third choice for this thing. You Jump in with an Uborak, you get the stun in, Stukov comes in with the silence, and then with the lurking arm, and then you can uh, have the Jaina damage right on point. And of course, after level 13, Stukov also has the root on the ground, so that's pretty cool for him too, with a virulent reaction as a talent. Zaratul banned away. And I'm still wondering if we are going to see Asmodan for the Finnish team, but I would say it becomes a little bit less likely with Stitches now. You still want to have some burst damage behind that can play with the Li Ming, for example, that's one option. Genji hasn't been banned out yet either, by the way, so those quick rotations on the lanes that are so close to each other can still be played. But again, Finland loves to throw out some crazy shit every now and then, and given that it is Tomb of the Spider Queen, I could totally see that. There's the Ragnaros. Could go also for us here, after the hook and root. And Hanzo. Ona! Ona! <laughs> that voice line always cracks me up. And what are they missing? They could really go into another melee if they wanted to. Or they can just simply add... Like, th this is a little bit of a weird thing, right? Because oftentimes when you're talking about your second melee, you want to have someone that is a little bit more hit point heavy so that you're able to sustain yourself at the front line. Ragnaros can be bursted quite easily, so you can play that with another melee if you want to. Or if you're confident in the abilities of your Ragnaros player, you can add another range damage too. But here's Thrall and there's Genji, so we have... Two at the front, Thrall for the bot lane, and Genji can make those rotations happen. Very likely going to be Thrall versus Ragnaros at the bottom of the map, unless they are going to try and get now another melee hero in, like Blaze, for example. But if you don't do that, then more damage would, of course, also be nice. And that leaves us with potentially Gul'dan, if Bluebell doesn't go on that. There's the URL. All right. Off laner again. Okay, I kind of like that. Triple melee and uh, going with Ragnaros into a bit more damage heavy hero. Can play around either Sulfuras after Stitch's hook or still play that lava wave. That being said, let's jump in and see if the Finns can turn this around and at least put one point onto the board for themselves and force a third map of Spain wins this 2 0. Game on, everybody! Finland versus Spain! And we are looking at Finland to the left side with Malfurion, played by me, MXT on Hanzo, Bivel on Ragnaros for the blue team, Chikabawa on Stitches, and the Duke on Urel. With Spain currently having the 1 0 over their opponents, we have Ryudem on Stukov, Inertia on Jaina, Darket on Thrall. Exilom on Genji and Kuroneko on Anubarak. So the idea being to engage with Anubarak, trying to jump in heavily and then of course follow that up really quickly with ideally the silence, already the lurking arm build started for Stukov with his level 1 talent choice. And then just trying to make sure that you are able to get the damage win through Jaina and therefore a quick kill. But we have a similar setup on the other side, at least when it comes to these isolation ideas with kills. You're trying to get the hook, now Fury and Fauna, and then... Especially, I mean, the damage that has to come after needs to either come from Hanzo, but also Bivel needs to deliver a little bit too. It's very unlikely that we're going to see Urel in that form and rotation, because Urel is not able to get as much damage out as, let's say, Ragnaros. And Ragnaros also helps a lot with the wave clear, so he's going to be part of that form and for now. Whereas Urel takes bot lane against Thrall, who's trying to get his Echo of Elements quest stacked. Yeah, that was a bit ambitious, doesn't land that. Now with Nubarak, you have to be, of course, careful that you don't dive in deep and uh, don't hit the stun. There's no Garrosh to instantly punish him for any kind of play like that. 
But at the same time, this is already looking pretty good. Exelom zips in. But has to move out, and the hook is currently not hitting. Buvel still getting some damage in against Anubarak on the other hand, though. So, well, with that being said, this might be the game where Finland turns things around. They're not as crazy this time in terms of their composition as they were the last time with the Asmodan setup. But we're still having them right now with also Hanzo, by the way, going straight into uh, the auto attack quest, Stormbow quest. Ooh, the kill against Bevel. But the hook and the counter kill potentially at Kuroneko and Nuburak survives even after Hanzo hits home and drops him again, but talking about dropping people, Hanzo has to be careful too, because his brother nearly dropped him. So first kill secured for Spain, and nearly following it up with kill number two. And Nubrak is able to get away from this one, but it basically shows you exactly what the two teams are going to try and do here. Get a hook, get a kill. Burrow charge in, dive in with Genji, and try and get a kill as well. It's all about them trying to get the turn-ins right now. And this is where Finland, the last time they played here, had a massive problem. They had a lot of gems, held them for a long time. And then they lost a big team fight, lost every single one of them, and never really got a turn in. I actually don't think that they turned in a single gem when they played against Italy. Or did they? I can't quite remember, but yeah, when they lost the 150 gems that they had at some point, that was a massive issue. Also, by the way, Chikabawa with a little bit of a build adjustment here. We're taking a quick look. Now, first of all, we're having him in level 1 with the patchwork creation. That in itself is not really too crazy. So, like, all about giving him that additional sustain. But on top of that, we're now having him in level 4 with the serrated edge. So, the bonus damage on the hook. Now, personally, I'm not quite sure if that talent was ne really needed here, but it definitely helps if you already feel that you don't have that burst damage that usually comes with a Jaina or any kind of mage that is heavily reliant on cooldown. I mean, Le Ming can get a combo off too, so they're playing this a little bit different. But so far, Chikabawa not quite on Lorana's level when it comes to landing these hooks. The German player and captain has done a bit better there in uh, the yesterday's matches. The rotation with the wave clear is still pretty decent for Finland. I mean, they're doing fairly well around that. Just moving in and getting those waves burned down very, very quickly with the smash, with all Spubel going in, helping out on Ragnaros. It's just something that's very difficult to match for Spain. But Spain is looking for kills. And they already have the attempt to go for MXT. The hook this time against Kuroneko. He doesn't have the burrow charge. And that might be the end of him. But he's again moving away. And that shows you how difficult it is when you do not have that mage burst damage. There is no Jaina damage, there is no Liming combo, and you don't even have Gul'dan as a follow-up. That is a huge problem if you're trying to play that style. Kuronekon is a new Burak, is very ambitious here, moves in right away, dies, loses the gems, Genji is trying to get a few of them. <laughs> it's actually a nice thought. He's sitting there and he's saying like, wait, can I swift strike through the gems to get them? The answer is no, but he at least got some. Yeah, he caught the ones towards the end, so they still lose a fair amount. And if you look at the turn-ins now, the blue team already completing the first web weaver wave and is now able to try and push that through. Down at the bottom, Thrall, does he get body blocked? Uh, unfortunately for him, or fortunately for him, he's able to get past Urel. Didn't really body block too hard here. But now we're having level 7, and with that, we're having also Nature's Cure. That's going to help a lot if Anubarak engages and Malfurion is ready for it. Defense at the bot lane for the time being, but the hook again missing at this point. Once more, we're seeing topside only Ragnaros. He's going to be pushing that in, but has to be careful that this rotation after it defeats the Webweaver doesn't rotate top instead of bot side. But bottom is where the massive problem is, because that's a four-man currently that's pushing here. And even with the silence... The question is how much can you do there? I'm actually wondering why the Web Weaver itself is not silenced. Still gets the wave through. I mean, every other mercenary is usually silenced by Stukov too, as we've seen on Towers of Doom, but not so the Web Weaver. The Web Weaver might be blind as a bat and is always missing these waves very heavily, but at the same time, for some reason, can't be silenced. Too resistant against that. So they take down a few walls, not more than that. The towers are falling at the top and the towers have fallen at the bottom of the map, so they open it up. But that's all that Finland is getting out of this right now. So uh, we still are going to see them with an attempt to get that second turn in and then try and snowball this a little bit. Level 10 ability is, of course, is also going to change this quite heavily. And that's really where I want to see if we're going to see Lava Wave over 
Sulfuras. Because you could tell the entire time how many problems they had to really get a kill after a successful hook. Especially when we are having a Nubarak, for example, diving in and trying to punish him. If they want to have more burst damage, then getting Sulfuras would be great for them. But if they feel they have to win the game through macro, then uh, going into Lava Wave might be the better option here for them. It can give you quite a bit of value for sure if played correctly. Here's the hook, and that's a decent one against Genji, but he's still able to jump out, protected by the way. And with that, we're now having the Web Weavers for the red team. That could it, it could actually come to an interesting point where we have level 10 on the side of Finland and then maybe them able to make a play here. Molten Core already used for the defense. Great to zone that out. Not only taking down the mercenaries, but also taking down or trying to take down the Web Weaver here. The silence is great, that lurking arm build again is extremely powerful. And the hook is missing once more. Chikabawa not able to land these just yet. Top lane defense also ongoing with right now Hanzo and Malfuri. And there's the level 10. Are we going to see the Gorge? Are they maybe trying to bring someone behind the wall? No, instead we're going to have them with Kudik Bile. And what is Ragnaros going to do? No choice up to this point. And there it is, Sulfura Smash. They're trying to go for the quick kills. Where's the hook? Are they gonna land it now? They need the root, they need the hook, and then they need to try and kill someone instantly. And ooh, bit of damage, but missing the stun. Hanzo was trying to set it up with an arrow, but that didn't connect the way they were planning it in towards the back line. Interesting setup regardless. Hanzo arrow into Sulphurus would definitely work too. You don't necessarily need to just wait for the hook. That was a good one though, but there was no follow-up. You know, it's not only about hooking like Laranas, you need to have a fill behind you too that just lands these roots and believes in your ability to land the hook, has that trust that every single time you throw out a hook, there will be a root as well. A lot of zoning hooks from Chikawawa in this game so far. Creating space for his team. But now, that's a big attack right there, and Stitches might be in trouble, but is able to sustain himself through all of this. It's tough taking a good Stitches down, but also they didn't stack the damage properly. Then again, as I said before, one of the problems that Spain has is they didn't have a lot of lockdown outside of Nuburak. So it's not really all that tough to just walk away whenever the engage happens, but that's going to change when the virulent reaction is being picked up on 13 for Stukov. And he's able to follow that up with also a quick route. It's going to make it much more difficult for the opponent to walk away from this. Already, Duke being attacked down here. Ult being popped, needs to still jump out and is able to escape. Quite important with the 22 gems that they're holding here. But that allows, of course, the turn in right here. Shikabawa, another hook attempt. Sulfura Smash and Arrow are both up once more, so they can try and get that setup going again. And Nuburak, a little bit deep. Here comes the Arrow, but Bivel isn't in range to drop the Sulfura Smash right after onto Jaina. So Arrow being used, but they can't get the follow-up. Finland is trying. They're really looking for the kill, but so far they are not quite successful. Yeah, Malfurion is in a huge amount of trouble, by the way. Even, like, everything. X-Strike, and then, uh, first of all, also, uh-oh, yeah, a kill against, a kill against um, Stitches. So they start with the Sundering, and then they even X-Strike on the target that's already dead. There's no kill like Overkill. And that is also Blue Web Weaver Wave now coming at an unfortunate moment in time because the turn-in was completed, but it just happens as the rest dies. So with Stitches now dead too, this is a Web Weaver Wave that you can't really use. I mean, you only have three people on lane. Malfurion is slowly making his way back. But that's going to be an easy defense for most of these lanes by the Spanish team. Bot lane, Bebel and uh, Duke are trying to get something out of it. And now with MXT moving in, uh, jumping straight on the Thrall. And nice! Cutting the path of retreat of taking him down. But Hanzo falls. Hanzo falls to Genji. Good job by Exelon. And Spain is starting to get closer and closer to maybe make this happen and win the series 2 and 0. Very nice defense. Might still lose the four down at the bottom of the map, but now that the rest of Spain is starting to rotate in, they have to be a little bit more careful. Jaina is still dealing with everything in the middle. Cocoon is on the ground and they're trying to have the follow up. Here comes the silence, not just yet. Gets a pustule out, alright. And the stun is dodged. Nature's Cure also being used by Malfurion, so is there a little that they could do? They didn't have the burst damage there either because Jaina still had to make the rotation. In the mid lane, the fort is still not falling. 
So yeah, that's the second turn in on the side of Finland and Sp Spain did deal quite well with it thanks to the kills that they got beforehand. So yeah, virulent reaction is in. Red web weavers are now also descending and this is really where Spain is going to try and make their big play. In terms of builds, by the way, just coming back to that real quickly, we have now Urel also with the Repentance taken. So increasing the slow even that you get through those jumps helps a little bit if you're trying to chase targets down. Still didn't quite expect that talent to be taken here. Pretty much a bunny hop build that we're seeing here. Full Avenging Wrath at this point. So getting the additional armor, the Holy Avenger, then on 7, which is pretty much the standard to have the two talents on 4 and 7 taken, but then even going into the added synergy with the Repentance here. Sundering, so for a smash hitting a Nubarak, but unfortunately only him. And now the move towards the top lane with Molten Core used in the middle of the map. There's very little that you will get out of this one, but then the move towards the top, and now Finland has to make a choice. Who do they send bot lane to deal with this wave while well, they're still defending, uh, defending the top? Where the keep is going to be attacked next. Webweaver, again, a <laughs> little bit too late. They're not the smartest. Webweavers are not really smart. They're not like Gary. Gary, the Gagunshan, at some point went to school and got a little bit smarter with the AI, but the Webweavers are still a little... Uh, they're dummies. They oftentimes miss the target completely. Blind is a bad, going to the wrong one. That wave, yeah, kill that fountain. There's like five heroes in the key, but what do, <laughs> what do you want with that? Let's attack the fountain. That is a great target. But as the defense comes through, the wall still falls, and to the bottom of the map, we're now having the four take now too, and of course they can take the one in the middle as well, which means that we have just three forts taken out by that objective. Extremely well done by Spain. Good push, and now Finland is starting to fall behind a bit. They need their kills, and for their kills, they need to have the synergy. Either it has to be the arrow of Hanzo into a Sephora smash and following that up, or they need to play around Stitch's hooks. That is an ambitious move, by the way, and it is completely, I don't want to say ignored, but missed by Finland. There was no talent advantage, it just made the rotation, they had some vision on the map on heroes, and they just said, let's just get that. We have the damage output, we have Jaina for burst damage, we can get that quickly, let's move in, get the boss, and then try and get the key. So a little bit of a greedy move, but it worked out for them quite nicely, didn't get punished in the least, was scouted way too late. And now we have the attempt to go for another kill and Stitches might be in trouble. This time there's just nothing to save him. The Sephora smash misses as well. They're trying to go for a second kill against Malfury and the Twilight Dream goes off. But he still dies and so does Urel. And that means we are not gonna, only going to see the keep fall. We are probably going to see the game end. Because all of a sudden there's a 16 talent in the hand. 7 kills against 2 and Spain is moving through and attempting to murder their opponent. In comes the Molten Core. But, well, I'm not quite sure how to say this. It's not going to change a thing. This is going to be a game as we have Spain taking out Finland with a 2-0 and claiming third place in the group. Finland finishing last.